Over the course of the past 18 months, Ukraine has built up what we call a mountain of steel. And that means armored personnel carriers, tanks, anti-aircraft weapons, artillery, and it launched an offensive to try to take back as much of its territory as possible from Russian occupation. That offensive has not gone as well as had hoped for. Yes, Ukraine has taken back a substantial amount of territory, but there is a long way to go before Ukrainian forces reach their goal of breaking the land bridge between Russian forces in Crimea and Russian forces to the north. We've got another six to eight weeks before the weather turns wet and muddy. The offensive probably comes to an end then, and then we'll have to see whether it simply continues for the definite future or whether there is a push to try to move toward diplomacy. The main purpose of Zelensky's trip to the United States was to attend the UN General Assembly, but the timing was opportune. And that's because on both sides of the Atlantic, the consensus for continued to support to Ukraine has begun to crack. On this side of the Atlantic, Republicans are pushing back against the budget and against more assistance to Ukraine in particular. On the other side of the Atlantic, Poland has suspended the transfer of arms because of a disagreement over imports of Ukrainian grain. This was a critical moment for Zelensky to reach out to publics and governments alike to shore up support for continued assistance to Ukraine. As far as the next steps for the conflict are concerned, I think we will see the offensive play out. My best guess is that Ukraine will not achieve decisive victory, that Russia will not achieve decisive victory. Neither military has the capability to vanquish the other. As a consequence, I think what you'll see is the beginning of a stalemate by the end of 2023, and then either the war continues for another year, another several years, or we may see an effort to negotiate a ceasefire and perhaps a long-term diplomatic settlement. At this point in time, it's too soon to tell which of those two options will prevail. But at least for now, neither the Ukrainians nor the Russians seem ready to talk. They continue to be ready to fight.